What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Too Deep. We've done several videos on the serpent in the Garden of Eden, so we get a good amount of comments and opinions on the subject. A common one is that the beasts of the field aren't animals, but people. Now, I agree that they aren't animals, but not that they are people. I've noticed a few trends within this argument. It's always based on hatred. Whiteys say it's the blackies, and blackies say it's the whiteys, and there's never any biblical evidence for it either. So let's just dive right into this and read the account of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 through 7 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Now, in our video, The Beast of the Field, which is under our Too Deep category or playlist, we went into detail about how the word translated here as serpent is the Hebrew word nahas, which means dragon. We also looked at the meaning behind the word beast in the term beast of the field, as well as other things. So if you haven't seen that video yet, go check it out. But it is an old video, so just, just be gentle. Now I want you to think about this. If the serpent is a person, right, the lesser race, if you will, then how did the serpent know that you wouldn't physically die if you ate from the tree? How did the serpent know that whoever ate of the tree would be like God, knowing both good and evil? If it's the lesser species, then they wouldn't be wise at all. They wouldn't understand things outside of Adam and Eve's understanding. Let's take a quick look at serpents in another famous story in the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 21 verse 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Now, if the serpent in the garden was a type of lesser human according to these races, then it wouldn't make any sense that there are fiery serpents that God sent to bite the people of Israel, which caused them to be sick. If serpents are lesser humans, then one, they can't be fiery. Two, they can't cause humans to die with poison when they bite them. That doesn't make any sense. On top of that, why then did Moses have to make a bronze serpent and set it on a pole for everyone who was bitten to look at and then live if they're less than human? That doesn't make any sense. In fact, this was a type of Christ. It was a type of foreshadowing of Christ. John chapter 3 verse 14 through 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. According to Jesus, he was to be lifted up just as a serpent was lifted up in the wilderness. So how can the serpent in the garden be a lesser person, but the serpents in the wilderness some kind of supernatural being that foreshadowed Jesus' sacrifice on the cross? 
So while you think about that, let's read the rest of the Genesis account. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 through 15. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. In our video, What Was the Serpent's Curse in the Garden, which is under our Too Deep category or playlist, we explained the first part of the serpent's curse and what that meant exactly, but we didn't talk about the last part of the curse, recorded in verse 15. Verse 15 says that God tells the serpent that he will put enmity between the serpent and the woman, between his offspring and her offspring. Now, my whole life, I took this statement for granted and never really thought about it until the other night. God wasn't talking about Eve. God was talking about Mary. Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 through 6. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven, behold a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1260 days. The woman in this vision that John sees is Mary and her child is Jesus. It's not the church. The church will not rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Jesus will, according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. For more reasons on why this isn't the church but Jesus, check out our video, Revelation chapter 12, War, Why Did Satan Attack, which is under our Too Deep category or playlist. So then, who is the dragon that attacks them? Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven, and the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. The dragon who attacked them was Satan. Now I want you to pay very close attention to this. Satan is referred to as that ancient serpent. What ancient serpent is John referring to? Could it be the serpent in the Garden of Eden? Let's skip down a bit to verse 13. Look at what happens when he is thrown down. Revelation chapter 12 verse 13 through 17. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness, to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and times and half a time. The serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to the help of the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God 
and hold to the testimony of Jesus, and he stood on the sand of the sea. Before we unpack this, I want to refresh your memory of our earlier verse, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is about Mary, the church, and Jesus. Satan attacks Mary, recorded in Revelation chapter 12, not once, but twice. Then after he can't attack Mary anymore, he goes after her offspring. Who is Mary's offspring? Those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. That would be the church. Here's another thing I want to bring to your attention. Genesis chapter 3 verse 13. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Now, Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 describes Satan as the deceiver of the whole world. Are you suggesting that Satan is the deceiver of the whole world except for Eve because that deceiver was a lesser human being and not Satan? Now, that doesn't make any sense. You can't be the deceiver of the whole world and not be the deceiver that started it all. Then you're really not the deceiver of the whole world. This now just leaves one last question. Who are Satan's offspring? John chapter 8 verse 39 through 47 says, They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I hear from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, we are not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Now was Jesus saying that they are physically not the descendants of Abraham, but physically the descendants of Satan? No, he even sums it up to, if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? You don't believe me because you're not of God. He's not saying that those who hear him and believe him are physically of God. No, no, no. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about a spiritual father. Just like we, the church, aren't physically descendants of Mary. Jesus is referring to spiritual fathers. Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 through 9 says, Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Now let's skip down to verses 28 through 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Just as we are not all physically the offspring of Abraham, because many of us are Gentiles, we are all spiritually his offspring based on our actions, namely faith. Those who do not have faith, but instead reject the Son of God, are children of Satan, according to Jesus himself. So while you guys ponder all of these things, let's sum everything up real quick. The serpent in the Garden of Eden wasn't a lesser human. It has absolutely nothing to do with race. The serpent in the Garden of Eden was Satan. Satan is a type of spiritual being, specifically a serpent, a dragon. Enmity was put between the woman, Mary, and the serpent, Satan, because Mary is the physical mother of Jesus. 
who didn't have an earthly father. Luke chapter 1 verse 26 through 38. This was a prophecy of Revelation chapter 12 when Satan attacked not only Mary but her son Jesus and her other offspring, the church. Now the only people who would believe that the serpent in the garden was a lesser human simply based on skin color are those who need to pray to God that he would remove the blinders of racism off of their eyes so that they can actually see the truth because it's not about race. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel and until next time, God bless.